guys, your boy is back on the grind one more time, Mr. D-I-Y, back at it again, Mr. Do-It-Yourself, back at it again, today attacking the uh, Caprice. So there's, there's a few things that I have been wanting to do to the Caprice, uh, well, at least a few more things, but those are going to take course over the, um, over the summer. But there is one thing, one issue that I have been wanting to attack, and that's the one-two shift. As you guys know, if you watched my previous video, when I went on vacation, I left the car at the shop uh, to have them look at the one-two shift. Uh, my transmission guy seems to think that it's fine. Um, I personally don't think so, uh, just because if he or anybody at the shop were to drive it just normal, I don't know what type of driving they did with it, uh, because as you guys know, once I got it back, the speaker box was shifted to one side and it ripped all the wires out and everything. Uh, so somebody had to have been driving this thing hard or at least took a hard corner um, because of it. So when you just step on the gas, just normal driving, uh, it's a hard shift. You can tell. I mean, the you can hear the, the drivetrain kind of uh, move a little bit. You can feel it. Uh, if you step on the gas hard and get out the gate, uh, it makes it makes some some aggressive noises down there, and it shifts the car really hard. And I don't see how uh, you can think that that is fine. So I, I don't really know. I, I'm not trying to bad mouth them or anything. I just have a different opinion on it, and there's no uh, issues with getting a second look or anything like that. However, I just thought that I would do my own research and kind of see what issues they're having in regards to these particular transmissions and why, and if there's a fix for it. So in regards to that, I actually found something that I'm going to try to do to it, and hopefully it won't take that long. It seems pretty straightforward, and, and you know, if it fix it, great. If it doesn't, then it's just an upgraded part that I added that was just 16 bucks, and, you know, just a little bit of time an effort you know i'm not out anything if it doesn't fix it but i'm thinking that it might so let me flip this camera around and show you guys what i got all right you guys so here we go i actually have the camera in my left hand i usually don't have the camera in my left hand but the way it was filming i had to put it in my left hand so if it's a little off or shaky or anything like that that is why but anyways these are all the parts this is the part right here it is called sonax or Sonax, I'm not really sure, but that's the part number right there, 77998-03K. And as you can see, it's for a 204R, 4060E, 4060E, 4070, and it's the, uh, the pinless accumulator kit uh, for the piston, which is right here. Uh, and I believe this is specifically for the one two shift. And this will make more sense once I pull the accumulator out you guys will see but uh, this is the uh, disc or piston here and this is uh, aluminum and they come plastic and I guess over time well there's a few different things that can happen with these from what I'm um, hearing so the original ones are plastic they look a little bit different than this however they're still around disc I guess over time they can uh, get fragile they can crack they can wear uh, and because of that, they don't seal as good, they don't work as good, they don't move up and down as good, and sometimes they can get stuck and not even really work at all. Uh, so behind it, there's a spring or two that sits behind it, and that's what um, the pressure uh, from the spring allows it to go up and down. Now, I don't know what type or how much pressure there is. From my understanding, uh, the pressure is fairly low considering uh, but that's what these ball bearings are for. So how it looks is there's a there's like a accumulator housing. There is a pin that's probably about as long as this inside of the accumulator housing. And the pin sits inside of a hole and that's kind of how it's anchored. Uh, the pin is also sitting in between the disc inside of the accumulator housing. So this uh, disc will slide up and down the pin, if this makes sense. So I guess over time that hole can wear and then it'll actually will leak fluid out. Uh, sometimes the disc will crack, things like that. And so that's what causes the, uh, the harsh shiftness. You might say, well, you just got your transmission rebuilt. How is that going to affect your particular build? Well, I guess 
the plastic discs uh, can cause problems regardless. And uh, sometimes, sometimes, when transmission builders rebuild the transmissions, they don't necessarily always change every single little thing in there. Now, if it looks good, they might just say, hey, you know, just put it back in and run it. Um, they might just replace it with the normal OEM part. So it might be new, but it still could be causing the same issue. Uh, so that's what I'm kind of thinking. I'm either thinking he left it in just because it looked fine and just because of, you know, some of the upgraded parts in there and the way that it's uh, performing, maybe it's just causing it to shift uh, harsh. I'm not really sure, but that's what I'm kind of just guessing. So I don't necessarily think it's something that they did uh, to make it shift hard. I just think maybe it's something that might have been overlooked. And a lot of places won't upgrade uh, things unless you ask them to so supposedly this is a pretty common upgrade here and like i said this part i believe it was like 16 bucks on amazon i got uh some new transmission fluid so that's like seven bucks per uh quart so i got three of those just in case i wasn't as sure how much transmission fluid i would lose and then i got this gasket and that was like 10 bucks so you know all in all if i end up using all the transmission fluid and everything i mean that's 21 you know, 35 bucks, uh, you know, 45. So I might be out $50, you know, worst case. $50, a little bit of time in hopes that it will work, you know, maybe. But if not, worst case, hey, I got an upgraded part in the transmission. I know that that shouldn't fail and whatnot. So, you know, it's worth the risk to me. I don't know. We'll see. $16 part, a little bit of time. Uh, you know, we'll see. So, how this works is, and you'll you'll guys will see a little bit more how it works. When when you take the accumulator housing out, you got to take the pin out. You actually have to punch it out from behind because it's uh, pressed in there. And uh, the ball bearings go in place of where the pin used to be, and then you secure the ball bearing inside of there. And I'll show you guys how that works uh, once the accumulator housing is out. And then that's what stops the the uh, transmission fluid from seeping through the uh, the hole where the pin used to be. And then you have these uh, little round gaskets here. Uh, they're different sizes, so you can't really get it mixed up uh, when you put these on. So this is what seals uh, the piston inside of the, um, the accumulator housing area. So like I said, I mean, it's, it's, it's just kind of a peace of mind, cheap assurance, again, a little bit of time. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of time out of my day, but literally all you have to do is just drop the pan. There's three bolts that hold the accumulator housing on. I think they're 10 millimeter. Uh, you take those bolts off, the housing drops right down with the disc and the springs that are inside. Uh, the springs that are inside, I believe that is what he replaced. He went with a lighter spring to, to kind of soften the shift up uh, because he didn't have to take apart the transmission. All he had to do was drop the pan. So I think he put a lighter spring in and it worked, but it didn't. Uh, you know, like when I push on the gas really soft, it's a softer kind of one two shift but it's still pretty aggressive so like i said if it works it works if it doesn't i have an upgraded part uh peace of mind knowing that that wasn't it and then um i guess we'll just have to either live with it or i'll take it back and and have him try to correct it so let me go ahead and get this going and then um when i take the housing out i'll bring it back up here then we can kind of go from there all right you guys so i got it out uh the pan is out and this is probably the cleanest i've ever <laughs> brought down a pan uh, as far as a, a mess goes but fluid is actually pretty clean i mean it's gonna have some darkness to it um as when the transmission is working you know you're gonna get some contaminants in it just from the gears grinding and stuff like that so a little bit of darkness is okay but it's pretty much um a good good uh, pinkish color uh, so uh, that looks really really good y'all really clean oh uh, I'm gonna take it to the other side here so the accumulator housing it actually ended up being on this side and I didn't know that so I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys under this is the first time I've ever seen it as well I haven't even looked under here quite yet so let's see if we can see it and of course this side of the of the uh exhaust hangs lower so we're gonna have to jack the car up a little bit higher but if you guys can see let me reach this light around that is it 
right there. That's the accumulator housing. And uh, nothing is blocking it. You can just move those wires over and then uh, and get to that third bolt that's behind it. But they're 10 millimeter bolts. And I think they're only in there by like eight inch pounds. So um, they're really not that tight in there. So when you tighten it down, you have to just make sure you don't torque them really hard. Just go to eight inch pounds. Uh, but the piston, the disc and everything that I showed you guys is inside of there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and take that out and just kind of see what we can do. All right, you guys, all in all, fairly easy job as far as to take it down. I don't know if this unit is new. I, I don't know. I don't, doesn't really look like it's new uh, just because a new one that I've seen online, this is really, really, really shiny. I mean, it looks like there is some wear to it, but I really can't tell. But um, in any case, <clears throat> it's just the housing. As long as the inside here doesn't have any wear on it, as far as where the disc goes up and down, I think it should be fine. So this is what I was talking about. The rod, this little rod here is in the center, and this plastic piece is what slides uh, up and down, and there's a spring behind it. And behind it, uh, that rod is pressed into that hole, so I would just have to take my a screwdriver or Allen key or some sort to, to punch it out. Uh, right now, the disc is pressurized inside of there, so what I would have to do is uh, force some air in there. I heard you could put about 40 pounds of uh, pressure in there. That's all you really want, and that disc will pop right out. So, uh, And then the spring... I'm not sure if there's a one spring in there or two. I've seen both. I think stock, they come with two, but I think aftermarket, uh, some people just put like a stronger spring in there or lighter spring, depending on how hard they want it to shift. So I just went ahead and kind of wiped it down uh, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. But as you guys can see, there is a difference. Uh, so I guess these over time will wear and crack and they're just plastic. They're not as durable as these right here. So, uh, but that just sets right inside of there. So I'm going to go ahead and attack this right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn my uh, compressor on, force some air in there, and see if we can get that thing out of there. Hopefully it'll pop out. Oh. Mm. Yep, there it went. Uh, let me grab a rag real quick, you guys. So... All this oil doesn't go down the drain. All right, you guys, so it did work. It's popped out. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and clean this mess up before this oil goes down the drain. All right, y'all, so I have the camera zoomed all the way in, so if the quality's not that great, that is why. But uh, there it is. It is up now, and um, I should be able to get a pick or something and pull this out. Let's see. All right, there it went. So there you go, you guys, that's a spring. So you got two springs. Looks like one sits uh, in its own hole and then the other one sits in its own little designated section. So you got two springs there and then you have this um, disc. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the original. To me, it does not look new. Uh, for as low as miles as this thing has on it, uh, it does not look new. That's just my opinion. Uh, it's probably better that we just change it out anyway. So I'm going to probably go ahead. Well, I am going to go ahead and do that. But I, uh, I guess you punch this out from behind here. So you stick a, a punch or something down in that because it's this little rod is pressed in there. And then you punch it out and then you, uh, stick the ball bearing inside of that hole and then you do a cross hatch a little chisel style pounding on it so the uh, ball doesn't come out and then you basically replace everything so uh why don't we just go ahead and do that right now All right, y'all, so that's what it looks like 
right there came right out of that hole so let's just see something here so I don't know if you guys can kind of see that so supposedly that rod uh, technically is not supposed to really um, give that much play from side to side I mean, this is supposed to slide in and out like that uh, because the disc has to go up and down. But side to side, if you guys can see that wiggle, like the disc isn't moving in my hand, but I'm moving the rod kind of side to side. So uh, that's what I heard. I, I, I'm, I'm not really sure 100%, but by eliminating this and then putting that in, it could help uh, because... Um, I don't know how much fluid is technically supposed to get past this, if any at all. Um, I know this fills up with fluid, obviously because uh, there's a a port right here and it fills up for, with fluid. So, uh, you know, I don't. I'm not really sure. I'm not a transmission guy, but from my research, um, there's not really supposed to be a whole lot of play from the rod uh, going side to side through this disc. And like I said, I. I wouldn't be surprised if this disc is the original. Worst case, the shift uh, continues to shift hard after putting this in. Um, and then I guess we'll kind of go from there. So if I if I ever need to change it back to where, where it was, I can because you can buy these. I actually heard these are, are kind of spendy, this, these housings. But uh, I'm not exactly sure how much they cost. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and attack this. And uh, like I said, you put uh, these one of these balls in right here. And uh, let me see. There's there's two different sizes. So there's a bigger one and a smaller one. So uh, I'm pretty sure this bigger one's too big. Yeah, that bigger one is way too big. The smaller one, it has to be. So you stick it in that hole that the rod came out of. And actually, oh man, that fits nice and snug in there. So it's a good tight fit, if you guys can kind of see that. Good tight fit. And I guess what you do, to my understanding, push that all the way down, is you, you use a chisel, if you guys can see, sorry, if you guys can't, and you, you pound across into it like that, so then the ball bearing doesn't come out. So I gotta be careful because I don't want to crack this aluminum. can right there it's a little cross hatch inside of there so now I'm gonna try to try to really push on that ball and see if it comes out that ball's not coming out of there so with that being said I am going to put these gaskets on now these gaskets seem to be uh really only go on kind of to one side but let me just go ahead and, and and be sure of that So these are the two springs, so that smaller round section, this bigger one, 
sits right behind it. There we go. All right, we'll reinstall it. And then I think the next part of the video will just be me driving it. So I can't really uh, film under there. It's just too tight. Me laying on my back and trying to set up a camera. It just, it just really sucks. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this in. All it is is three bolts. And there's a, there's a plate that actually sits up against the uh, transmission. Uh, so I'm going to put that plate back on and then I'll put uh, this on and then I'll get the pan cleaned up and reinstall. So uh, stay tuned. Check the floor.
you guys round two so hopefully my battery don't die it looks to be really low so hoping I can get this GoPro footage on here for you guys but um, I went home the fluid was actually really low uh, it was probably about two more quarts low than I initially thought so I went home topped it off and uh, we're set on our fluid level now and to be honest it seems to be shifting the same and so that's a win y'all that's a win ah, it is a win so I'm gonna drive it around a little bit I, I can't drive it around too long because I got to get back home I got clients to train but so far so good let's see official we fixed it <laughs> we fixed it um man it's driving really good fluid is topped off i mean all in all man far 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 better and actually the spring that they put in to kind of soften the shift might be perfect because I can still feel the shift. Sometimes it's 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 a not really aggressive, but sometimes you can you can definitely feel uh, the shift being a little bit more harsh than others. But I really just think um, it could be the amount of throttle that you give it or whatnot. Because now when I'm just driving from just stop go stop go stop go, uh, the shift is perfect perfect so i am loving that uh when i step on the gas a little bit more then i can kind of feel it a little bit more but that's to be expected the main reason why i wanted to get rid of that harsh shift is for one it was just really hard but two just regular day-to-day -day driving like in different situations so i was talking to my girl i was like well what if i what if i was at a stoplight and i had to get in front of this car to get over to make a turn or something like that like I can't step on the gas without fear that, you know, something's going to happen or I'm going to just shift the car all hard. You know, I mean, you know, that's just one situation. It's not just for performance situations either. I mean, I mean, just to have the car drivable, you guys, I mean, it was just really harsh and I did not like it. So I'm really glad that I came across this. This totally fixed it. So I wanted to document this. Um, there's lots of videos on there in regards to how to put this in and all that, but there's no videos on um, after, you know, after the fact, like taking a test drive and kind of see if it worked or not. So uh, I wanted to do kind of like the full, full on deal. Um, I didn't need to really do the install portion of it because there is tons of videos on that. And if you just follow how I explained it, it's really straightforward, you guys. You drop the pan, you see the accumulator housing there, you take off the three bolts, the whole thing comes out as one. There's no wires, there's no nothing. Um, you do all the steps that I just showed you to do. Uh, you put it back together, you bolt it back up, you put the pan and the gasket and everything back in, and that's it. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I gotta get inside and get ready to train my clients, but you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff, y'all. Stick with me. I am glad I'm able to help somebody else and help myself. And uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out, somebody out there. If it does, definitely leave me a comment. Definitely leave me a thumbs up, you guys. All right? Deuces. Out of here.